We screened uh, people affected with triple negative breast cancer, which is a very severe form of breast cancer. And we looked for how many of them had mutations in genes that predispose them to that disease and found that approximately 15 or 16 percent actually had mutations that they inherited through their families that led to the onset of their disease. We would like to actually study people who didn't have the disease so we can predict who might develop it in the future, but that would require an enormous study of maybe hundreds of thousands of individuals to get good estimates. So another way to do that is to screen people who already have the disease and work backwards. So this is by far the biggest study of its type with 1,800 individuals with this type of disease. Um, and the results were really quite um, enlightening in, in terms of the high proportion of individuals that are found to, to carry these mutations. Um, originally it was thought that this would be much lower. In overall breast cancer, it's mainly only 5% of people carry inherited predisposition gene mutations, but here it was, again, 15 to 16%. The main goal of the study was to determine whether the guidelines that are currently used to select women for clinical testing um, for these mutations were appropriate. Um, so in the United States, we have guidelines that suggest everybody under age 60 with triple negative breast cancer should be screened for these mutations. Our study actually verified that, found that those numbers were really very good. Um, in other countries, they use thresholds or cutoffs of, for instance, 10% probability of having a mutation. We found that um, those thresholds actually overlooked a very large proportion of the patients, as many as 25% of the mutations with mutation, patients with mutations were missed. Um, when we evaluate our data carefully, we would suggest that they should change their thresholds. So for instance, in the UK, they use a threshold of age of 40 or under, um, diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer as a point for screening. We would suggest they raise that to 50, um, and then they'll ca capture the vast majority of the patients with these mutations. When we find a mutation in an individual, there's a benefit to that individual perhaps in the future in terms of what type of ther therapy they might receive. We find that people with these types of mutations often can benefit from some of the new therapies that are being developed, uh, such as PARP inhibitors and, and additional compounds like that. Um, also, however, their family members will benefit because now we know that there's a, a mutation tracking through the family and those other individuals can be tracked for that exact mutation. And that alerts them to the fact that they're at higher risk of disease as well.